Good evening and welcome. Now let's take a step backwards by 70 years when the Mata was presented in Monza. Uh, Mata was the nickname, of course, it was born at 1900M uh, to answer a demand of the Ministry of Defense, which was for long the Ministry of War, for an IR-51, that is an exploration vehicle that should have replaced the old war vehicle still present in Italy, starting from 1951. The first time we talked about the Mata, we were talking about one of the vehicles you saw on the track, which was transformed by Alfa Romeo itself and took part to the uh, rally della Fratellanza e della Pace. But we've seen that today there is a gathering of uh, Registro Italiano Matta who brought other vehicles. Uh, some have a nice uh, history and we'll talk about that later on. But that is the occasion to talk about the car, which not only meant a lot, but also has deeper roots than one would think. The first time that uh, someone talked about a, a Alfa Romeo alternative vehicle was not after uh, the Second World War when the Mata was born, but after the First World War, when Alfa, who just became Alfa Romeo, takes its first project, the RL, does a cheaper version called RM with only four cylinders and immediately they thought that that body could also be used for a military vehicle. The First World War just ended, the market of compressors and uh, uh, weapons just allowed Alpha to be successful. So a sort of a caterpillar was created, uh, fed by the engine of RL, which had less than 40 horsepower and uh, uh, could give way to such a vehicle uh, like an old Terran and uh, amphibian vehicle that would represent a new market segment for a company who was still looking for its identity. These years were the years when Ugo Sivocci was winning the first Targa Florio in 1923, uh, when the four-leaf clover was born and the start of the sports tradition, but also the company had to uh, follow a financial relaunch. The project of the uh, RM uh, it was abandoned after a few prototypes and also after a very a good response by the Italian army, but which didn't order it. But Alpha didn't forget that opportunity and tries again. In this case, leveraging on a patent developed in Holland by Mr. Holle. This project was very innovative in terms of all-terrain vehicle. It was no longer a caterpillar, but a 4x4 with a very specific uh, transmission with four axles and the brakes on the wheels were water-cooled. A few prototypes were produced with the different solutions, sometimes with the old RL engine and uh, other times with the more powerful six-cylinder engine of RL. But in the end, also in this case, two prototypes were built and these were tested by the uh, pilot of the army. They were considered excellent but then the project disappears. There are no rejection letters, but no one talked about it anymore for many, many years. In this case, the last prototypes date back to 1926 to talk about a military Alfa Romeo. Then we get closer to the Second World War. It is 1939 when again there is a need of a light vehicle which could be used in what at the time was called the Empire, so consider also Eastern Italian Africa, where there were very battered roads, even worse than the Italian ones, but there were climate conditions which uh, threatened the car. It, there were peaks higher than 3,000 meters, but on the same road there were also desert stretches with dust and high temperatures. And that is the reason why an ambitious project was born, but there were <laughs> poor funds. So Alpha, which was working on the same project as uh, Fiat, decides that the only possible way is to adapt a, a, an already existing car. 
And at the time, the 6C2004 was the newest car and the Coloniale was born. That even before existing was a sponsored Massively, it had to be the car of the empire, had to be used for military reasons, but also for civil purposes. So it would become the car of the African uh, colonizers. So this is the starting point. And they derived a torpedo, recalling in the shape of the front of the Roma 6C2005 sold on the market but that had a higher setup, reinforced suspensions, which were the same of 6C 2005. The engine was 67 horsepower, filters could be washable uh, so that they could uh, work on hot climates full of uh, dust, uh, shorter gear, etc., etc. The coloniali are proposed to the Italian army, to the government, and the production starts of a small lot, 152 cars, which in reality were even too much because the project was not completed. They were still in a prototype stage, so these cars were uh, delivered to the army, and by irony, they were used very little in Africa, where they had to be used most of the time, and the only cars really used would go to Russia. So not with high temperatures and dust, but ice, water and very cold temperatures. And there they were not used for testing, but they were used by the army. It's six, seven cars which were sent there, and these were the protagonists of an incredible adventure, which was then told by a lieutenant whose name is secret. This report arrives as private and confidential at Alpha and was sent to the uh, president, the uh, planning managers, because at the time there was not only a very detailed report, but also about the consequences, the, uh, the failures in terms of injuries or casualties, etc., had provoked. So the Coloniale should to be quite robust in certain circumstances, but too low, uh, not at ease in muddy terrains. And the suspensions started to uh, break due to the cold. So first the springs break, and in Russia they tried to <laughs> use fuel um, to sort of uh, uh, glue them. So the springs are replaced with uh, wooden elements or with elements in uh, rubber derived from war vehicles left on the uh, war fields. So the arms of the suspension start to break, uh, the body breaks and some cars just break down. And so it's just a novel, but a dramatic novel. And out of those bunch of coloniali, nothing was known after. But after the war in Albania, some uh, coloniali were well, found because probably they came back from Russia, a few of them. This lieutenant describes all the uh, failures, uh, the details, but also gives a series of suggestions which are taken brought to the technical office of Alfa Romeo. Vittorio Iano left, at the time there was Bruno Trevisan, who would only uh, stay for a few years, which again writes another project, not for a completely new uh, vehicle, but starting from the Coloniale to have a real all-terrain vehicle, with all the uh, specifications of an all-terrain vehicle, suspensions that could withstand, etc., etc. So it's the Second World War almost, and that project remains for a few years 
in standby and in the second part of the Second World War, Italy is invaded by a series of wheelies and that becomes the new reference point. So a car which was born as an all-terrain vehicle, very specialized, it was no longer an adaptation of the 6C 2005, which was a car which uh, won the um, uh, competitions like Villa d'Este, uh, the Elegance Contest or the Mille Miglia. It is 1951 now, well, at the end of 1950, and two things happen. On the Arar fields, so the fields where all the war remains were sold, there are a lot of wheelies. There could be repaired because there were many spare parts and in America they were still produced, so there were no problems. But Italy feels the need to have a vehicle having similar characteristics of sturdiness, a capacity of being parachuted if needed, but also being lighter and made in Italy. So a new project was born, which is again sent to Alfa Romeo and Fiat. Alfa Romeo is a state company and Fiat is linked well, by other uh, interest with the Italian government and army. So the Mata, the 1900M, started to see the light and officially this car was derived from the 1900, which debuted in 1950 and it would have been the first car mass produced and the first real Alfa Romeo car with four cylinders after the RM, which was the first to be transformed into a military vehicle. But at this point, I would like to introduce the real expert of Matta, Franco Melotti, the father of the Matta Register, which I see somewhere. Franco, thanks for being here again. You already helped us when talking about the Matta. Uh, the rally of the Re della Fratellanza della Pace. Today we have another picture telling not only the story of the Matta but also some behind the scenes. This is a historical picture. In a few days it will be the 70th anniversary because in 1951 the Matta was officially presented. This is still the prototype derived from a Land Rover. I will explain why later on on the track of Monza. So the day before the Grand Prix Nino Farina is driving it, it was the world champion of the time, official pilot of Alfa Romeo. So they lead the way of a serious sports car and it was the day of presentation of the Matta. So it was a run against time because in December 1950 the Alfa Romeo direction gives to the planning and design office the input to produce a, a vehicle to compete against the Campagnola Fiat which started a few months ago so they had an advantage in the planning so the planning department having never produced something similar so specific for the army And for those difficult times of realization, this, they decided to buy a Land Rover 80, the um, model of Land Rover which was just put on the market, put the engine of Alpha 1900, and starting from there to develop it according to the guidelines of the project. So they start with uh, two stiff points then the project needed independent suspensions. So they put a frontal torsion bar, so, and then they wanted a blocking uh, differential at the back. But then the managers of the army also wanted a dry carter engine, because in the old terrain vehicle, the idea is having an engine that in any condition of tilting of the vehicle is lubricated. So with a dry carter, 
the vehicle, even on one side, and, and I experienced that personally, continues to be in operation and not having problems of suction of oil. And after this presentation, 16 of September 1951, there's another picture with a car closer to the series production. Now, this is another image of the tests that I wanted to do, but in particular, Colonel Garbari wanted to do the one driving who wanted that the prototypes went up and down all the stair cases you could find in Italy. This is a stair uh, in Camerino, this is in Assisi. That is an historical picture shot by Busso, the designer, and Guido Moroni goes up and then down the stairs of the Basilica of Assisi. That's when it was nicknamed Matta. No, it was nicknamed Matta when it was still a prototype derived from the Land Rover at the Montagnetta in San Siro. I'm not from Milan, but I was told that it was the place where all the debris of the bombarded houses of Second World War were collected and also of the Portello plant, which was bombarded. And on that artificial old terrain track, the prototype was tested. So, uh, Mr. Alessio, uh, Eugenio, I don't remember very well, it was an engineer whose surname was Alessio and was the director general of Alfa Romeo at the time, uh, seeing the prototype on this uh, terrain, said, well, but it, it, it's incredible, it, it's crazy, and I nicknamed it crazy, Matta in Italian. So the name Matta in the uh, designs never appears. It is called 1900M or R51, R but Matta is just a nickname. But it's a name that sticks to it and identifies that car and immediately explains what this car could do in the old Tierman vehicle. So at mid-September 1951, the order was approved. So not the big target, because most of the uh, AR-51 would be the uh, Campagnola, but the uh, Italian army accepts the first lots of the Matta. In reality, in Monza, it was still a body of the Land Rover that was on the track. It was not the final body. Now, the final body is the one of the first pre-series vehicle, the one climbing the stairs in Assisi in Monza in September 51. There was the prototype already had the final mechanics, but not the body, which was prepared in the following months. So the final mechanics were based on 1900 engine with dry carter. And also the 6C 2005, the Coloniale, had for the same reason the lubrication with a dry carter and a few uh, vehicles left uh, in Italy after the Second World War in the first years of uh, races uh, were cannibalized because uh, the single cock of uh, that was the same of the 6C 2005 racing because they had a dry carter lubrication so uh, they had the same uh, oil system and the engines of the Coloniale and there are not many left because they <laughs> served as spare parts for other vehicles. The 1900, the Mata, apart from the dry carter, had a specific transmission, am I right? Yes. Well, you said before that few uh, projects destined to the armies were eliminated for reasons, reasons of costs. With the Mata, it is uh, exactly the opposite. Giuseppe Busso, who was the father of the Mata, the designer, had completely freedom and giving freedom to a designer means that he takes advantage of it and doesn't take into account the cost. So, for example, the uh, amortizers of the Matta were the same that were mounted on the Formula 1 of the 50s. I've seen Maserati launch a Formula 1 of 50-51 and probably also Ferraris had these same 
dampers. So let's imagine what it would mean today to produce a vehicle using the dampers of Red Bull or uh, McLaren. And then the rest was planned uh, without taking care of the costs, all the mechanical part with uh, 80 or 100 uh, nuts in terms of uh, quality, the uh, transmission, the axles, everything was uh, made with steel coming from the aeronautics, so the costs were not a problem. And Busso himself, which I was lucky enough to meet here in the archive of Alfa, told me that it was a, a moment of pride of Alfa Romeo. They, know, they knew from the start that they couldn't sell a lot, just 2,000 were produced, so the problem was not cost. They just wanted to prove that Alfa Romeo was able to do an all-terrain vehicle as required by the guidelines of the project better than Fiat, because at the time they were competitors. Fiat, Alfa, Lancia, Autobianchi, they were all competitors. So in the end, the final Matta undergoes a series of tests especially in Abruzzo, in a polygon. And many images of those tests are left. So uh, there was mud, uh, narrow roads, etc. What comes out in the end? So the reviews from the army are enthusiastic for everything apart from few details. Uh, the engine uh, was considered uh, ambitious but also delicate, because it had an aluminum head, etc. It was born for another purpose, even though it was enriched, enriched for the matter in the torque. But then the problem was problem of costs. This technology and this freedom uh, led to a final price, also for the army order, that made it a, a specialty car. But as an old terrain vehicle, since you use them, I've been using them for 42 years. As an old terrain vehicle, it is an old terrain vehicle. Today, when you talk about an old terrain vehicle, you imagine a vehicle, four by four, which does the, you know, the usual off-roads. But this went really off-road. Count Bonzi, with two of these Mata, crossed South America, connecting the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean, opening a new way of communication and also a nice movie was shot and we could also project it here, maybe next year, a very nice movie shot in the moors of and march of Mato Grosso in South America and it went off-road, meaning there was no road, 11,600 kilometers, 60% of which following the uh, tracks of the herds, of the animals, to cross South America. It's a pure all-terrain vehicle. In the end, 2058 were produced. 2059 included the six species with prototypes and the Land Rover model um, and how they were distributed because they didn't go to the army so about 60 percent 1200 went to the ministry of defense which is the army 450 so 30 percent went to the ministry of interior so the police and 10 percent there was a civil version which was called ar-52 today i brought what is outside the beige or sand color, which is one of the 154 cars which were proposed for private. So private in terms of uh, people or companies. And out of this AR-52 part was bought by Agip Mineraria, a part by the Società Strade. One went to the Vatican for the Papa. Uh, mobile, maybe, I don't know. And these were cars, but the 52 was a more uh, refined and finished car to meet the needs of uh, the public and the privates. So one of the characteristics of this uh, 
is that in the archives, in the documents related to the uh, matta, at the moment of the marketing, immediately some versions are proposed, specialized versions, as if they were the normality and as if it were normal to sell them with those configurations. Some could be defined as normal, but others, on the contrary, are very specific because they were extremely specialist from uh, farming vehicles to snow vehicles uh, to vehicles to train the uh, soldiers who launch themselves with the parachutes. These are uh, brochures in four languages on the AR-52 in the different setups that could be offered. So this was destined to the firemen, you see, uh, with stairs and uh, water tank. The first one to the top was again for uh, watering or for, again, firemen. The second one was for farming purposes. The next one, in reality, was the matta that we see that you saw climbing the stairs of Assisi, that once the time of the prototype was finished, uh, was considered a, a mobile, like a service, you see Alfa for the customers of Alfa Romeo. And actually, there were very few with a covered body. And the one we have in the museum, the Officina Mobile, the mobile uh, garage of the della Fratellanza da Pace, uh, had a, a compartment of another car, which was then sealed on that um, car. Are there other cover bodies? Yes, I just uh, finished the restoration of one, which in 1953 went to the North Pole, following on Earth the Gier Falco airplane, which is an Ambrosini plane, as the one exposed here. This is the Angelo dei Bimbi. So the same model of plane with modifications to the climate for polar climates in 1953 due to initiative of uh, Mr. Lualdi, a journalist and writer of Corriere della Sera, so a man full of activities, wanted to cherish the memory of Ronald Amundsen, who fell 50 years before researching the airship Italia which fell on the ice of uh, the North Pole, Waldi, in order to honor the memory of this explorer, took a Gear Falcon and Alfa Romeo gave him a covered Alfa Matta with a heating system who could drive and do the same route with all the equipment for the plane and also equipment uh, to shoot a documentary on the life of the North Pole populations. So I found a car a few years ago. I am concluding the restoration and this could be <laughs> a future initiative. So, and we can open a chapter here because the Matta was the protagonist of many rides, the Fratellanza della Pace, and the one you talk about uh, South America, the North Pole, but many others. Yes, there are others. But my 152 for the Matta, well, 1952 was the year of production. 1951 was the year it was launched, but the production started from the next year. And that was a year full of uh, initiatives in terms of publicity. So there was the famous participation, uh, the Mille Miglia in 1952. For the first and only time, the Ministry of Defense enrolled two 51 Fiat and 51 Alpha 2 Campagnola and 2 Mat with a military crew in service who ran in a specific category army vehicles, so there was this competition which had to be symbolic, but as always in competitions, when you have to push on the accelerator, while well, you push it, uh, uh, one of the two matters 
that uh, still takes part in the historical Mille Miglia won with 42 minutes to the distance with the first Campagnola. The other Mata went off-road and it had to be withdrawn. So the Mata toured the world. There is a photo shoot where it is photographed everywhere. These photos in Egypt are very famous. This is a picture in Egypt, yes, because it, so I did some research uh, about this, hoping to find it because I do research. Um, I, I look for these vehicles, but this vehicle in 1958 was cancelled from the registry of Milan. So probably now it has an Egyptian uh, license plate and it was one of the few cars which were admitted, admitted by Agip Mineraria. Like, as far as I know, when the uh, Aswan dam was built, one company of Agip Mineraria brought to Egypt a few uh, exemplaries of Mata. So we're talking about an Alfa Romeo of the 50s presented in Monza with a dry carter engine producing less than 2,000 uh, uh, exemplaries, which won the Mille Miglia, did it have a great international success, but it's still a Cinderella of Alfa Romeo. Not everyone know it, everyone talks about it, but very few drove it, very few still know it very well. That's why it's the second time that we devote a backstage to it. Yes, it's a car that for many years was undervalued and neglected. I remember when I started the first researches, well, I bought the first Mata when I was 25. So when I was looking for these vehicles, so the Willys, the Campagnole and Mate were collected and this was the cheapest. I remember that, it, well, they asked for a Mata 450,000 liras, for a Campagnola 550,000 liras, and for the Willis 650,000 liras. So the Mata was the less appreciated. Uh, but then over years I saw that people started to understand, and when I started the restoration of the first Mata, I realized, uh, looking for news, information, uh, photographing the existing ones, that in all the most important collections of the prestigious names which own even important cars, well, there's always a Mata. Look, the Regini collection, okay, uh, it's a very famous name in the sector uh, of old cars, and they have a Mata. So, <laughs> they also have a role in the museum, and we have a third Mata less known and maybe next time we will talk about it uh, because it has a specific story so apart from this and the one that we have seen the, uh, the Fratellanza della Pace there is another one coming from the Swiss Agno branch which was where it was used as a service car to transport objects and also to scatter salt so you can imagine especially in the body, what are the problems of this Mata Franco. I thank you, but of course, if you have questions, <laughs> Franco is the right person. This is uh, just a present that the Registro Alfa Romeo, the archive, uh, gives you. So we uh, print limited edition prints at every collection. This represents a Matta of the police which is still in service here in Milan and that we had here last year. And today we are lacking a red Matta. We have a, a green, a white, but the red one could not be here last minute today. And it represents, well it's the same picture with Nino Farina in front of the Monza stands in 1951. Here uh, you see the Matta, which was one, and this is one of the 30 prints which are given to the participants of our gatherings. I thank you. This will enrich the document center 
under the Matta chapter. Thank you for following this backstage. We are here available for questions. Uh, Franco especially is here if you are curious. Otherwise, you can talk with him later on. If there are no questions, there is a question, please. Thank you. Good evening. Is it possible to find some good uh, exemplaries today, like matas in good conditions? Yes, it is possible. And lately I've realized that it's easier to find a moderately well uh, restored vehicle rather than the old uh, broken ones that you found once in the countryside. These cars, unfortunately, were penalized when the Italian uh, government issued the tax for uh, old term vehicles in the 80s. So the road tax was almost uh, equal to the value of the car. So many uh, cars were thrown away or demolished because many people used them for hunting or for passion or for farming and they preferred to demolish them. Today uh, you can find a few matas now and then you can find them. Thank you, Franco. Thank you for your attention. And now, if you want, there's another parade on the track.